Well, uh, thank you for uh, your attention. I guess I'm giving this talk as a video recording because I missed uh, the talk at ITA. And so I wanted to get a chance to do the presentation for those who might be interested. So uh, I'm going to be talking about map perturbations and measure concentration. And this is joint work with uh, Francesco Orabona and Tamir Hazan, who uh, were at TTI Chicago with me uh, when we did this work. And uh, Francesco Sell TTI and Tamir is at University of Haifa, and uh, Tommy Yakola, who's at uh, MIT. So I need to explain the title a bit. Um, and so uh, the uh, motivation for this work is the study of large structured prediction problems, that is, uh, problems where I have a lot of variables and I need to assign labels to all of these variables. Uh, and, canonical example that's motivating this work is, uh, for example, image segmentation, where you want to assign a label uh, describing which part of the room uh, each pixel in the image belongs to. So for, for example, that it belongs to the left wall or the right wall or the floor or the ceiling, uh, as a set of discrete labels. Similar kinds of problems arise in uh, tagging uh, speech signals uh, or in, in protein design. So the popular one popular way of uh, modeling these kind of uh, structured prediction problems is via uh, the framework of graphical models. So you assign to each variable um, a node in a graph, and these and their edges in a, in, in a graph which describes relationships or dependencies between uh, uh, different nodes. Uh, so the graphical model has uh, say n variables. Um, x1 to xn, we gather them up in a vector, and each xi may take a, has a has a set of discrete uh, labels. Uh, for example, in the image segmentation problem, if we just consider a two-label problem, you could consider assigning pixels in the image to whether they're in the foreground or background uh, of the image. We denote the set of all configurations by script x, which is just the product of all of the xi's. So we call each assignment of variables a configuration. And then finally, there's a score function or a potential function, theta, which takes a configuration and assigns it a score. That is, it says this configuration has a, a configuration has a high score if it uh, is a uh, good, uh, likely uh, configuration that's built. Uh, that potential function is often learned from uh, from examining data. So, as an example, this on the right, you see that there are these two uh, configurations. The one on the left might correspond to a good. Um, image segmentation, that is, you have two separate clearly defined regions, and so we might assign it a high, uh, the potential function would be large for this configuration, whereas the one on the right, the pixels seem to be sort of randomly assigned, and therefore it would probably have a low uh, configuration, and uh, low, low potential uh, functions for this configuration. So the basic framework is you take data, you build a model, and this gives you a theta of x, and then you also, which, which then induces a probability distribution p of x on configurations. And we call this the posterior distribution because it's sort of learned from the data. So p of x is actually uh, what's a Gibbs distribution with the potential function theta of x. So the probability of a given configuration is proportional to e to the uh, potential of that uh, configuration. There's a normalizing constant z for the distribution, and that's known as the partition function. So typically what one does is you uh, learn uh, this potential function, and then you try and find the most likely configuration. This is taking the argmax of p of x or of theta of x, and this is what's the, called the map estimate, the maximum a posteriori probability estimate. So it's just uh, x hat map is just argmax of uh, all overall configurations of theta of x. And uh, this is actually computationally quite tricky, but uh, there are some good heuristics for and sort of fast-ish solvers uh, for doing this. So this is sort of feasible. Now, it turns out that uh, in the kind of problems such as in image segmentation or the other problems motivating this work, uh, we have two uh, key properties of this uh, potential function theta of x. The first is that we have actually a lot of almost map configurations. That is, there are many configurations which are almost optimal in terms of uh, maximizing the potential function. And furthermore, these uh, almost maxima are actually not close to each other. So it's not sufficient to just sort of go and find the maximum and then do a little local search around that for um, among configurations. Um, in fact, there are many sort of uh, mountain peaks, if you like, in the, in the landscape. And that's what I'm trying to picture here in this uh, image. So 
really what you'd like to do is get uh, some of these almost configure almost uh, optimal configurations mainly because you know the data that you've learned from is not uh, you know the, the the maximum posterior probability uh, configuration is not necessarily the best one. Um, so what you want to do actually is sample from the posterior distribution P of X. Uh, but this is actually quite difficult. So here we would uh, take your data, build a model, and then you want a sampler, and you'd like maybe just sample several different configurations, and obviously they would be biased towards the ones which are more, which have high theta of X, uh, and you would get several good configurations this way. The reason it's difficult is because a direct sampling procedure would involve computing the partition function z, which is actually quite tricky. Um, in fact, is computationally uh, intractable in many uh, situations. Um, another option that people use is uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo sampling, and this is slow because of this ragged probability landscape that I mentioned before. So. What we do is adopt a different framework, um, and this uh, clever idea, which was uh, proposed by several authors, uh, is to take the potential function theta of x and actually add a random perturbation to it. So instead of computing, and then you do the map. So instead of taking the, the, the maximum a posterior probability on, on the potential function uh, theta of x, you actually do it on uh, a, a new potential function, a perturbed or noisy potential function, theta of x plus some gamma of x. So I, I have to design a, a random uh, noise function, if you like, to uh, add to theta of x. Uh, and we basically treat the fast map solver, these heuristics we have for solving the map problem, as a sort of black box. So we can call this x hat uh, r map, a randomized map. Um, which is this the argmax of theta of x plus gamma of x. It turns out that if you choose for gamma of x, if you choose a, a gumbel distribution, so you generate iid gumbel random variables for, uh, for each x. So for each configuration x, I generate an independent gumbel random variable, which is given by this distribution uh, seen on the slide. Then it turns out that the distribution of this x hat uh, random map is actually the p of x. So, um, and in fact, the, the log partition function is the expectation of the maximum value. So this is great. Uh, it seems like uh, now we can sample from p of x very efficiently, right? So when you just generate uh, the number, of, you know, script x, uh, size of script x, iid random variables. But if you recall, size, script x is uh, the product of all of the xi's, the alphabets for each, or the label sets for each, um, variable. So there's actually an exponential number of random variables. So this is actually too complicated uh, computationally. So we seem like maybe we're out of luck. But uh, some work by uh, Tamir, my, my co-author and his collaborators, uh, has shown that uh, you can essentially use this perturbation method approach, like this framework, to estimate the partition function accurately enough to build a Gibbs sampler for the for, for P of X. And so a Gibbs sampler, as you may recall, is a, a uh, sampling procedure where you sample each coordinate one at a time, um, you know, essentially conditioned on the, the other coordinates. It turns out the, the key here is that you can use uh, sort of lower dimensional or uh, lower complexity, if you like, uh, perturbation structure. So now, instead of generating one gumbel, independent gumbel random variable for every uh, assignment of conf every configuration x, um, for configuration x, I actually represent the perturbation as the sum of gumbel, independent gumbel random variables, one for each coordinate. So really now, instead of, taking, instead of taking the product of all of the xi's, script xi's uh, alphabets, I'm now doing the sum. So you only really need the sum from i equals 1 to n of uh, size of script xi random variables. And that's uh, you know, linear in the number of variables as opposed to exponential like we had before. Um, the key to this sampling procedure, which is uh, you know, in, a, in another paper, is to compute the uh, expected value of a random variable vj, and this vj is essentially a truncated version of uh, this uh, map solver, a perturbed map solver. So I take theta of x, but I, uh, at plus a perturbation, but I'm only maximizing over um, the coordinates from j, to, uh, from j to n when I'm doing vj. So I can again use a fast map solver, uh, again as a black box, to solve this subproblem. Uh, but what I really need to do is compute this expectation of vj. So just to back up and recap, so the goal is to sample from the probability distribution P of X 
And to do that, what we're going to do is perturb the potential function theta of x and uh, build a sampler from that. So this Gibbs sampler, what it needs is estimates of the expected value of vj for this truncated sum, just going back to this vj over here. I need to, to estimate the expectation of this. So what I'll do is I'll generate, um, and vj has some distribution q. We'll just call it q. So what I'll do is estimate vj just regu via regular Monte Carlo. If I can sample iid from q, these uij's, sample, uh, say, mj of them, then I can add them up and uh, average them, and I get a good expect estimation of, uh, uh, estimate of the expectation of uh, vj. Each of these uij's, uh, being an independent copy of vj, is just a function of a small number of Gumbel random variables. So what I'll do is I'll generate a bunch of Gumbel random variables, calculate uh, this um, maximization via the fast map solver, and then uh, do that mj times, and then get an estimate of vj. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll take all these estimates of v1 through vn, and I shove it into my Gibbs sampler, and then this will give me my x hat r map. Um, this uh, randomized map uh, estimate that I wanted. So in order to, to make this computationally tractable, what I need to do is bound mj, that is the number of samples that I need uh, to estimate the expectation vj accurately. Um, so in, in order to do that, actually what I need is a measure concentration result for this distribution q. This distribution q is a function of, again, a small number of Gumbel random variables, but actually you know, a reasonable number of Gumbel random variables. Um, and I need to essentially show that uh, uh, sampling from this distribution and averaging will converge quickly to uh, the mean. So this is actually, uh, if you look at this, uh, if you look at the function vj, vj is a function member of this perturbation back here. Um, this is a function of, uh, you know, n minus j uh, Gumbel random variables. And uh, so it's actually, uh, and it's a Lipschitz function, so it's a Lipschitz function almost everywhere. So it's essentially measure, what we're doing is measure concentration for Lipschitz functions of this, of Gumbel random variables. And a Gumbel random variable is an unbounded random variable. Um, and actually it turns out measure concentration in this setting, uh, proving essentially that the, the distribution of the value of the function uh, uh, is almost constant, uh, is a bit tricky. Um, so it's been done for Gaussians and Laplacians and also strongly long co log concave distributions. So that is if the variables are IID and uh, Gaussian or function of Laplacian, IID Laplacians or strongly log concave distributions, you can get these results. And so, uh, unfortunately, the Gumbel distribution is not strongly log concave. It's uh, the, um, if you take the second derivative, it's not bounded away from zero. So uh, what we actually do here is prove a logarithmic Sobolev inequality for Gumbel random variables. And the details are in the paper on archive. But uh, basically, uh, you know, you, you have to go and dig into the proof and sort of reprove a result to get uh, measure concentration for, for these functions of Gumbel random variables. So that was a lot of fun. Um, and here's kind of the main uh, corollary of the, of the, the more general result uh, that's in the the paper. So if I let mu denote the Gumbel measure on the reals, and I have a function f which goes uh, takes m reals and spits out another real number, and we have sort of um, the the bounds on the gradient and the you know infinity norm of uh, of the gradient, the, the, then essentially so essentially the gradient that behaves nicely. Um, then if I essentially take m iid random variable Gumbel random variables. Uh, of, uh, MIID random variables with the same distribution as this function of Gumbel random variables. Uh, then with probability at least 1 minus delta, if I take the average of those, these, these eta j's are taking the, the place of these ui j's I had before, then it's close to the mean of the function. Uh, and how far, you know, how close it's, well, it's the max of two terms. Um, so with probability 1 minus delta, uh, you get the upper bound that's, you know, essentially 1 over um, the number of sum ands are one over square root the number of sum ands. So you get a sort of um, this kind of uh, tight concentration, and this tells you how many times I need to, how many uij's I need to generate, and therefore how many times I need to run my map solver. So let's take an example of this uh, just briefly before I uh, finish up. So, um, so remember we had before that the log partition function was the expected value of the maximum of the um, of the maximum of the, the perturbation. 
So log z is just expectation of v1, which is a function of all of the, all of the coordinates. Um, so my function now is just a function of all of these gumbel random variables. I gather them up in gamma. And uh, it's just v1 minus expectation of v1. So I want to know what is the deviation. It's a function of n random variables. Uh, sorry, uh, essentially script sum of i equals 1 to n of script i uh, gumbel random variables. So for example, if the labels are binary, it's 2n. Um, and the gradients satisfy some nice uh, bounds, which you, can, which you can calculate. If I estimate then the expectation by drawing MIID copies uh, and, and averaging, then the uh, uh, error in this bound, so now I'm looking at, again, F is the, the error, is less than 20 over M or 20 times N, root 20 times N over M. Uh, so really, in general, this... Uh, uh, second, well, it depends on the value of n, but one of these two terms will dominate. The total number of variables I have to generate, the total number of gumballs I have to generate, is capital M for each, capital M times little m, which is uh, the, the number of gumball random variables for each perturbation. And the total number of calls to the map solver that I need to make is, well, one for every uh, copy of f, and so there's capital M of those. So it turns out uh, there's some uh, you can do experiments and see if it works uh, how well it works and those are detailed in the in the paper. It's not um, uh, it's faster. I mean, it, it, what it does is it lets you implement this uh, sampling algorithm that that I mentioned before um, and bound its its performance. So just before I finish up, a few closing remarks. Um, the proof details and of course experimental evidence that I mentioned are in the full paper, which is on archive. Um, I uh, should, probably should have put the link on the slide, but I guess not. You can Google it, though. Um, the main technical result we have in the paper, the sort of uh, technical result, I showed you the cor uh, corollary, but the, the sort of main result is actually a Poincaré, and what's called a Pon Poincaré inequality. Um, it's actually also implied by recent results of uh, uh, Wynn, which are, uh, were published uh, just, just in this year. Um, we may be able to get tighter bounds, actually, uh, for Gumbel random variables, specifically by directly bounding uh, what's the functional entropy, which is a, a thing that appears in, um, in these logarithmic sub-11 inequalities. So that's a bit of a technical note. Um, so uh, more future work would be to explore connections between these sort of map perturbation methods, uh, and the more map perturbation bounds, and uh, pack Bayesian uh, generalization bounds. This is a, a topic which has been studied before. Uh, and then finally, of course, we'd like to try and try the sampler out on real problems and see see how well it uh, how well it does at generating these kind of almost map configurations. And uh, well, thanks for listening to this. Uh, and sorry I couldn't make it to ITA, but uh, I hope at least this uh, was interesting enough uh, to worth sitting be worth sitting through is worth sitting through. So thanks and. Uh, yeah, feel free to email me or any of my collaborators with any questions. Thanks. Bye.